state your name and occupation for the folks at home, would you? Uh, my name is Alex Merle, and I am a CBS page. Really? Well, for one more day. One more day? Is it your last day, in fact, Alex? It is, in fact. Yeah, well, we'll... Wait, wait, wait! Wait, wait he hasn't finished it yet! Where are you going, Alex? Uh, it's still to be determined. <laughs> you know what that's code for? NBC! <laughs> Let me ask you, Alex. I don't think you're harboring any notions you're gonna get to keep your jacket. <laughs> it's a fine jacket. I'll, uh, I'll be sad to part with it. Well, you know what? I got a surprise for you, Alex. Yeah? Yeah. You can keep it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> now, I know I'm not authorized to do that. <laughs> but I'd like to see that bastard try and stop me. <laughs> He don't care. Yeah. yeah. So I say we're going to, like in a sports competition, you know, when a great player retires, we're going to retire your jacket, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how many, many years have you been here? A uh, year and a half. That's a long time in the page game. <laughs> pages, pages usually burn out pretty, pretty young. You know, I mean, they're, there's like usually about, you know, 21, 22, they're gone. This is true. What age are you? I'm 26. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. I, I, I was 42 and I took this job. <laughs> you know, you just, you know, you do your thing. What are you going to do then? What do you want to do? Uh, not really sure. Maybe Drew Carey will hook me up with a job. <laughs> now, I think we might want to keep the jacket, Alex. <laughs> No, I know Drew Carey. I, I, can, uh, I can put a word in there. What do you want to do down there? Uh, I don't know. Price is right where they usually had me. So, uh, you know, working the Late Late Show is kind of a nice perk here and there, but uh, usually at price. Is there a difference between the price pages and the Late Late pages? Uh, is there a pay scale involved? <laughs> I think they pay a little better over at price. He's getting to keep the I can have a jacket. <laughs> Good luck, Alex. Thanks. Wish you all the best. with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Expedia, where you book matters. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. enough, sit down, relax, and cut it out! <laughs> it's kind of odd when you do that, because it ruins it for when I run into other people in the street and I'm like, eh, where's my round of applause? <laughs> like, hi, everybody, I'm here. Oh, hi. What? Oh, hi? What about a standing ovation and a whole lot of phony enthusiasm? What about that? <laughs> Dentists, man. Yeah, I swore this early in the show. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What are you gonna call the CBS police? Uh, Detective Andy Rooney? Uh, what do you think you're doing? Ah, uh, let me ask you, did you swear on this? <laughs> yeah, that's Andy Rooney now. Man, I've, I've gone off a bit early tonight, haven't I? Oh, it's a great day for America, everybody. <laughs> It is 
That's because, uh, uh, the, you know, the, it's a great day for Scarlett Johansson because, you know, the FBI are now investigating the hackers uh, who got nude pictures of her off the cell phone and apparently the FBI is close to finding those responsible and thanking them. <laughs> She's not the only one who had nude pictures stolen off her phone. Hackers broke into my phone last night. <laughs> uh, we've got a graphics guy. We like to give him work. <laughs> uh, we got the picture that's now all over the internet from my phone. There it is. <laughs> I don't know. The most embarrassing part of that for me is actually the tramp stamp. You want a close up of my tramp stamp? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I say I was young and in love? <laughs> he had the kind of props I liked. <laughs> uh, it's a great day if you like the strange records. The new Guinness Book of Records is out today. I always wanted to get myself in it. In fact, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to try and get in the Guinness Book of Records right now. I'm going to try and set the record for the longest awkward pause on television. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, you bastard. <laughs> What the hell was that? It was like four seconds or something. <laughs> anyway, don't worry, I'm sure there'll be plenty of awkward pauses later in the show. <laughs> Some people have more than one title in the Guinness Book of Records. For example, the man who holds the record for the world's longest fingernails also holds the record for world's most cautious masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in! <laughs> I actually have a friend in the Guinness Book of Records. My friend Regis Philbin holds the record for the person who's been on TV longest. 15,662 hours. I can't imagine doing that many hours of television. Although some nights here. <laughs> I know, I know, it seems longer to you, but... Uh, one of the new categories this year in the book is most piercings. There's a male category and a female category. We've got a picture of the most pierced female uh, there. Look at that. <laughs> I know. That's the noise I made as well. I mean, oh. Yeah, but don't judge, you know. I mean, come on, love all the people. And we've got a picture of the most pierced man. Where, uh, there you are. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, he has no piercings on his face, but... No piercings on his face, but downstairs looks like a, like a metal hedgehog down there. <laughs> By the way, Metal Hedgehog is the name of my Motley Crue cover band. <laughs> Holding on to a Guinness record is difficult, though. The average record stands about 13 months. It's just the nature of the game. If you're the guy that can squirt milk out 10 feet out of your eyes, you know there's always someone younger and squirtier coming up behind you. <laughs> Right, Jeff? You said it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that the Guinness Book of Records was founded in Ireland? It really was in 1950. It was originally a way to settle trivia-based arguments in Irish bars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, any Irish bar I've been in, though, you, you never go, all right, all right, calm down, everyone. Let's go to the book and find out. <laughs> it's not like, wait. Now, everyone just hold your horses. <laughs> Before that, all they had uh, uh, to settle the arguments in Irish bars was the Irish tradition of broken bottle to the face. <laughs> you bastard, I know who's the most cautious masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't, it's in fact me. Because I've got a broken bottle in me hand. <laughs> if that one falls, never mind. <laughs> You know the man behind the first edition of the Guinness Book of Records? This is true, so you can't touch me for this. His name was Sir Hugh Beaver. <laughs> that's his name. We got a picture of him. There he is, that's Sir Hugh Beaver. But you know what's interesting? He's clean shaven. I thought back in the 50s, beavers were hairier. But Sir Beaver. <laughs> Sir Hugh Beaver's. Um... <laughs> So you Beaver's day job was manager of uh, the Guinness Brewery. So what he did is he slapped the Guinness name on the book and he sent it uh, to every bar in Ireland with free beer, which probably explains, you know, the stupidity of some of these records. You get guys going, I bet I can fit 50 cigarettes in me mouth. There, yeah, right now. <laughs> That's nothing. I'm going to have a beard made of bees while I cautiously masturbate. <laughs> Take that, 
James Joyce, you punctuating, spurning charlatan. I look forward to your letters, Joyceans. Your way too long letters that you didn't really read. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I've read it. No, you haven't. I haven't read it. I got, you know, I got about halfway through it and left. I'm kind of the Sarah Palin of Joycey in books. That's what I am. <laughs> anyway, it isn't just people in Ireland who love drinking the Guinness, you know. You know who loves Guinness. This is true. Steven Spielberg loves Guinness. This is, I know this to be true. I met him a few, a few years back when I was working as a valet. <laughs> no, I, I've worked with him. I met him and, and I've told him, he's a nice guy. But it, it, I, we got talking and he said the best birthday present he's ever had was when his wife bought him a Guinness tap for his basement. He has Guinness on tap in his basement. I don't know why, but that's uh, it's really funny to me. I like picturing him you know, sitting in his little basement pub with all the tiny creatures he's ever worked with. <laughs> You know, all the little gremlins and that other funny little guy, what's it, Tom Cruise, all in there. <laughs> all of his. Hey, Tom, you want to... Oh, yeah, give me another one. Yeah, there we are. E.T. probably there as well. Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> E.T. getting all belligerent after a couple of drinks. You don't know me. <laughs> E.T. phone home for booty call. You ever, you ever drink the Guinness, Jeff? Oh, a couple of times. That sounded a bit like Bing Crosby. <laughs> yeah, it sort of did. Too. Yeah, it did, yeah. A little bit. I've had, I've had a few during the, before the show. <laughs> well, that sounds just about hot. Hey, do, do your E.T. impression again. That was awesome. <laughs> Knock it off, Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> is he drunk again? Are you, is this going to be another Jeff is drunk off his ass show? No, man, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> How you doing? Do the commercial thing. Okay, uh, quickly. Tonight's program is brought to you by a new Steven Spielberg film that has the critics raving. The story of a man who handled his business, guarded, carefully, gingerly. Craig Ferguson is... The cautious master. Ah! Come on now, knock it off! Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the show, which is setting a record tonight for giving away the most jackets on TV. <laughs> We've already given away one. Will there be any more? No, there are. Asphalt. Won't. <laughs> are you all right? You sobered up a bit? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, hell, man. This is like two, the second time in like the two weeks. Have you seen the show? <laughs> Yeah, well, you make a fair point. But, no, I'm getting worried about you. You're drinking too much. You no, can't be drinking on the job. I'm You've got to... I'm fine. <laughs> you do... I think it's affecting your performance. I'm fine. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> well, your timing's all off, never then. Good, try, try again. All right. <laughs> Actually, you're fine. It's exactly the same as it always is. <laughs> All right, uh, you know, you know what time it is. Tonight's tweet mail segment is brought to you by the new art house classic. Between self pleasure and self preservation, there lies the cautious masturbator. Jeff. <laughs> Play the jingle, please. Twitter. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Twitter. 
Chicken Vindaloo is good to eat. My name is Scooter. I'll fix your computer. I'm a happening guy and a dope troubleshooter. When you don't take support, you'll be talking to me. I got more patience than Mahatma Gandhi. And email. And email. All right, this is from Haley in Oakley in Kansas. You ever been to Kansas? I, I got a place there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you do at your place in Kansas? I get naked and throw bees. <laughs> Yeah? Do you go swimming? Sometimes. <laughs> hey, this is Alien Oakley Kansas says, Dear Craig and Jeff, I plan to travel around the world by joining a dance company. My parents aren't thrilled by the idea. What do you think? Oh, come on, what do they know? <laughs> what could go wrong about touring the world in a dance company? You... <laughs> You'll meet all sorts of lovely people. You know, it depends on the type of dancing. I mean, if you're doing, you know, if, it, if it's ballet, it's one thing. If there's a pole involved, it's a different thing. <laughs> it's all dancing. They're just, you know, you have to be more specific. What do you think, Jeff? Uh, sounds fun. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> this is from Andrew in Dover, Ohio. Ohio. Uh, you ever been to Dover, Ohio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dear Craig, a couple of weeks ago, I flicked my cigarette button that landed on my boss's motorcycle and burned a hole in the seat. Should I tell him? <laughs> if he doesn't bring it up, don't you bring it up. Uh, like, there's no good can come of that. What's he going to say? <gasps> I didn't know you were still smoking. I'm concerned. <laughs> this is from Ken in Providence, Rhode Island. Ever been in Providence, Rhode Island? Got a little place yeah, over there? Yeah, <laughs> Dear uh, Jeff and Craig, it would mean the world to me if you could read my letter on television. Can you do this? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, Elyria in uh, Berlin in Germany. Oh, I always enjoy the tweets from Germany because I get to read them in my German accent. <laughs> she says, hello, Craig and Jeff. <laughs> What is a good and subtle way to find out if the new guy at work likes me? <laughs> Jeff, how do you find out if gentlemen like you? Well, you go up to them. <laughs> and you put your hands in the genital area. <laughs> and then you will know. CBS care. Uh, this is from Jeff in Chicago, Illinois. I don't know if you can tell, but Jeff's a cockatoo. All right. <laughs> it says, uh, me, Dear Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Peterson, do you believe people can be cured of phobias by hypnosis? Would you ever try it? <laughs> you know, it might be a way of curing you of your dipsomania. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Look into my eyes. I'm going to try and sober you up using hypnotic power. Okay. All right, you ready? Uh, all right, here's what we're doing. Watch the testicles. <laughs> You're beginning to feel more alert. It's almost as if the testicles waving in front of your face have caught your attention. <laughs> Your body is coming back to life. Your nerves no longer feel slurry or uh, sluggish. You feel alert, excited, and most of all, sober. After I snap my fingers, you will come to, you will... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you will be sober. Three, two, one, you're sober. Bulls. Oh. <laughs> How are you? You, you feel, feel any better? I feel pretty good. Thanks, pal. <laughs> All right, here's the test. Uh, hold out your hand and touch your nose. <laughs> oh, you bastard. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. This is from Carol in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She's a duck. Uh, dear Craig, my mother always said, never say no to your husband because somebody else will say yes. Good advice? <laughs> I find myself on the horns of a dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> J. 
Jeff, what do you think? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. Welcome back to the big jacket giveaway. We've already given away one. Could there be more? No. <laughs> My first guest tonight is in the movie Abduction, which is in theatres September the 23rd. Uh, take a look at this. Wait a minute, if he's holding her hand, they'll get caught in the door. <laughs> Am I the only sober person in Hollywood? Please welcome the great big movie star, Sigourney Weaver, everybody! Let me just say this. It's not often we get something as classy as you in the basement here. Oh, so thank you very much. Nice. You look very, I'm very impressed by your earrings this evening, oh, if really? I may say. They're really lovely. They are Lanvin, you know, from Paris. They are? I was I, at Paris recently. I know, and uh, and I wasn't there with you. I was so I was so jealous. I was so jaloux. Jaloux? jaloux. I was jaloux. I'm sorry, I don't speak French. Does that mean jealous? <laughs> I was green with envy. Uh, well, there with envy, in fact. Yes, I was there. There with envy. <laughs> Very there. There avec envie. There avec vous. <laughs> no. Look, I, anyway, I got something to ask you anyway. But, look, you know, there's always the... next year. No, no, if you want to go to Paris, we can go. I okay. mean, yeah, screw this crap. I'm out of here. Let's go. <laughs> I, um,. I, 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 do you spend a lot of time in Paris? Actually, I, I do. I do. I have a very good friend in Paris. Really? Who is it? <laughs> um, actually, it's a costume designer. Which one? Well, she, <laughs> she did Gorillas in the Mist and... Uh, oh, I liked that movie when, oh, at yeah. the end when you and Digit had she the little She dressed all stores. the gorillas. Uh, yeah. Really? <laughs> so See, you couldn't she tell. was good because if I was doing costumes for Gorillas in the Mist, I'd have had them in little comedy there outfits. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't have worked. Yeah. That, that movie when you uh when they buried your character at the end and oh. they let the the stones with the grave thing do you remember oh. it's lovely yeah thank yeah, you yeah. it's all right they, no here i got a problem <laughs> here's the thing like in the movie the clip that we showed yes yeah the the little uh, werewolf twink guy he holds on to the <laughs> he holds on to the his girlfriend's hand and then they yes. jump out the car but she's in the back seat he's in the I front know, seat i know that's interesting yes yes i'm not quite sure how they did that how did they do that is it some kind of spy car Maybe. All right. I think that's the answer. Right. You know, they just... Mm, believe. Yes, they believe. Well, that's what young people can do, yes, that, of course. True. At my age, if I try and hold on to someone's hand and jump through that, the laws of physics that's intervene. That's right. Now, um, what's the story, then? Are you a spy master? Uh, a spy master? I yeah. Don't... Wouldn't I be a spy mistress? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, I am a, a psychiatrist, actually. What? what? I got a, I, I am his, his character's psychiatrist. It was so exciting to play a psychiatrist. I actually left therapy after 20 years. I said to my psychiatrist, that's it, I'm playing you. So I really, if I need help, I can look in the mirror and say, how do you feel? No, wait, What's wait. What's that about? Wait, wait. I've been in therapy for about 10 years. Yes. And yeah, every time I visit my, you know, I don't go to a psychiatrist. I go to a, maybe I should, because yes. the therapist I go to, we never get involved in car chases, ever. Uh. We sit in our office and have conversations. I mean, it's, it's yes. terribly pleasant, but, well, you know, it's a little after 10 sometimes. years, yeah. then you can graduate to them picking you up and taking you well, I, I, You were in therapy for 20 years? At least 20 years. Really? I think. Who hurt you, Sigourney? Uh, <laughs> Who didn't? <laughs> Honestly. You know, I, I do I do go yeah. to therapy. You stopped though? I stopped. I went cold turkey. <laughs> How often did you go? Now I'm completely out of my mind. Yeah. <laughs> right, Jeff? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you looked for valid. I remember him oh, from yeah, Mystery yeah. Science Theater. I know it's probably your cousin or something, but yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> I have kind of a thing for robots, what with all the work I've done. Well, you've done quite a bit of, yeah. with robot monsters of I one know. kind or another, and he is a terrifying monster. He's anyway. Craig, I am Craig, get away from her, you bitch. Oh. <laughs> No one has ever said it better. What, what the hell? That's you good. call me a bitch in my own show here? <laughs> in my show time where my children play with their toys? Anyway. Yeah. Go, go Sorry. Okay. Well, I, well, that's nice. So you're a psychiatrist that uh, has a patient and uh, throws him out of a car? Yes, yes, yes. It's complicated. You have to see the movie right, okay, to find yeah. out exactly. You know who's in that movie, except, apart from you and yes. uh, uh, the lovely young man is... Um, Lily Collins. Yes, and um, <laughs> Alfred, Molina, oh, Alfred Molina. My friend, Fred Molina. Oh. Yes, he's here quite a lot, you know. Oh, is he? Yeah, he likes to dress up as a lady. Does he? <laughs> I guess that's what I'm doing tonight. You are a lady. Some days, yes, yeah, I am. No, I, well, I where, should dress up as Alfred Molina next time I come on. No. no. <laughs> I know Alfred Molina pretty well, oh, and do I you? yeah, and I don't think you should. I'm gonna mess I'm going to do some interviews with him. Do you have any any, any tips? suggestions? Any yes, secrets he's very ticklish. I can divulge? Yeah, and, ticklish. Yeah, he's ticklish, okay. and okay. he's uh, very embarrassed about how hairy he is oh. downstairs. <laughs> I'll bring that up right away. Yes. Uh, you really want to get a reaction okay. out of him? You say, "Oh, nice okay. to meet you." Have you got your fur pants on? Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right. No, it really makes him uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. No, that's good. So, you're, are you doing all the press junketing for this? I'm, thing? I'm yeah. doing a junket this weekend. Oh, nice. Then nice. I go to Kazakhstan. Wow. Has anyone here been to Kazakhstan? I mean, these Kazakhstan. people haven't been to Burbank. Never mind. <laughs> Wait, Kazakhstan. I'm so what, excited. What are you doing in Kazakhstan? They're having um, a film festival there called the Eurasia Film Festival, and they invited me to come and, you know. I saw Terrace Bulba with Tony Curtis when I was like yeah, that's, ten. Yeah. And it's all about Kazakhstan. Well, um, that uh, sounds uh, nice. Uh, you could do your show next year in Kazakhstan. You know. And I could sort of, you know. Show us around. Yeah. All right. Well, you're not coming back then. Well, I could just find out enough so, to help you do your show. What are what are Kazakhs into then? Are they uh, mm. um, well, I guess movies? I'll... I guess. Yes. Yeah. Actually, they they uh, that's where all the Russian Stalin sent all the Russian filmmakers to Kazakhstan. That was where they built their first studios. Really? Yeah. Well, Stalin didn't like film, though, did he? Maybe that's well, why he sent them so far. I mean, away. if you made a <laughs> if you made a film that Stalin didn't like, it's yes. worse than getting a bad review in the New York Times, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, I think that's true. Yeah, mm, that's interesting. Much worse. What language do they speak there? Kazakh. They speak Kazakh and Russian. Right. Do you speak any Russian? Uh, ya tibia lublu. Do you know what that means? Yes. I probably said it wrong. Did I say it wrong? No, no, no. Well, I well, love you, I hope it means. Oh, yeah, Lou Blue. Lou, Lou, Lou yeah. Blue. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's... <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I've been to Russia. I spent a little time in oh, Russia. Yeah? I love well, Russia. Well, yeah. you speak so many languages. I, yeah, that's right. So I do. I speak English and drunk robot. Uh, <laughs> that, that's it. So and your uh, German accent was convincing. Thank you very much. Although it was brief. Well, you see, I, li I like to do a German accent as uh, Nazis in British films about the Second World War that were made in the 1960s. That's what I base <laughs> my German... I was like, for you, so what's over, Tommy? I like to talk like, yeah, that, you I see? like that. Yeah, do you do a German accent? You know, I could try to do German, but I think it would sound Russian. You know, I could just speak with my Russian accent in Kazakhstan. Maybe they'd understand me better. People like that. People like that. When you go to their country, if you can't speak their language, just do an accent of an English people person speak, speaking English from, and then and yes. they love that. I like if you go to France and you go, "Hello, I don't speak French, <laughs> but I'm very happy to be here." They're they're like they love that. They're like that's even yes. better than speaking French. <laughs> I will speak like this in Ra in Kazakhstan and be a great success. You uh, you make it a little sexy. Okay. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, accidental. <laughs> but I disagree with you. I don't think it was accidental. At all. <laughs> I think you know exactly what you're doing. Oh. You all right, listen. Uh, me. We're okay. out of time. All right, all right. So, um, awkward pause, or okay, mouth organ, or. New, uh, a new one, go for the big cash prize. <gasps> Ooh, that sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. How big? 
50 bucks. Oh, all right, I'll do that one. It's, uh, I think it's 50. Is it, it looks hard? A smaller. I think since I've started giving it away, how much is here? 50. 50, 50 bucks in singles. So, you know, when you go to a strip club, you've got everything ready. Oh, and that's that's where I'm going after this. So. Really? Yeah, okay. of course, every um, night. Hey, by the way, you know, uh, oh, never mind. Um, Do I just take it? No, you don't just take it. You have to answer the question. Oh, all right. All right, then. So now, strict. Here. <laughs> Iceland is in the North Atlantic, right? All right, if all right. you say the so. The capital of Iceland is a city called Reykjavik. Right. You get wait, the money. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. What is the population of the city of Reykjavik in Iceland? Uh, any hints? Yes, it's just over 200,000. <laughs> Does that mean you win the money? Try answering the question. Oh. Just over 200,000. 214,000. Close enough! Close enough! <laughs> is a very, very funny comedian. He's on at the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, September 16th and 17th. Please welcome the adorable and very fragrant Ted Alexandro, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. I am 42 years old. I'm single, never married, no kids. I did it. Made it through the maze. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you are in your 20s or 30s, just hold on, because it is beautiful on the other side of that rainbow. <laughs> you don't hear enough about it. You don't have enough role models. It's pretty much me and George Clooney, I think. <laughs> I just think that getting married in your 20s is probably too soon. I don't think you have enough life experience. You don't have enough tools on your tool belt. All you have is like a hammer and you're just banging everything. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa, that's a screw. <laughs> like, it'll work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think I had a Blockbuster video membership in my 20s. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time because Netflix didn't exist yet. <laughs> so, don't get married in your 20s. <laughs> All right. You're gonna marry Blockbuster and then Netflix will show up, you'll be like, oh man, this is way better. <laughs> I should have waited. I got a voicemail from my five-year-old nephew. I don't know if you've ever gotten a voicemail from a five-year-old human being, <laughs> but it is not business as usual. <laughs> they don't have any kind of phone rhythm yet, you know? Why would they? They're five. <laughs> they laugh in weird places. They're out of breath for some reason. <laughs> so my nephew left a message, and this is exactly what he said word for word. He said, what do you do when you're going poopy and you run out of toilet paper? <laughs> then he laughed and then he hung up. <laughs> that was it. That was why he called. <laughs> so I played it back a few times because I wasn't sure if it was like a riddle or if I was really supposed to answer him. I was confused. So I called my brother's house to find out why I got this message. I figured my five-year-old nephew probably did not act alone. <laughs> my brother explains that they went to a restaurant and the two of them went to the bathroom together. In the bathroom was a toilet paper dispenser that had two rolls of toilet paper side by side. My five-year-old nephew had never seen this before. 
blew his mind. <laughs> We've all seen the dual role system. Probably don't even react anymore. <laughs> this was his first time he was beside himself. He didn't know what to make of it. He said, Daddy, why? Why do they have two rolls of toilet paper? My brother explained, it's a spare roll. Like when we're at home, if we run out, I can call out to you or mommy, and you can bring in an extra roll. But here, they can't do that. <laughs> so they have an extra one just in case. So my nephew said, well, what does Uncle Teddy do? Because he lives by himself. <laughs> which I thought was a fascinating look inside the mind of a five-year-old <laughs> and a sad commentary on my life. <laughs> but I guess now at some point I'll have to explain to him that Uncle Teddy goes like this over to the closet <laughs> and hopes that there's something made of paper or plastic. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. If you're going to be in the L.A. area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 323-570-0059. How are you feeling? You sobered up a bit? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. I'm really sorry about that. Pal. All right, man. I, I, I don't know what's got into you. I mean, that's, that's like twice in a couple of weeks you've been, you've been here and you've been a little, uh, a little worse than where. Uh, uh, I'm just a. Something going on at home, man. What's going on? It's troubles. <laughs> Is this about Alex leaving? Yeah. <laughs> you always really liked Alex the Page, didn't you? I really did like Alex the Page. Yeah. <laughs> he, he'll come back and visit us. I, he won't come back. Anymore. He never liked being here, you know. He always preferred the prices, right, with their... Well, he, al he always preferred being down there with their entirely human cast. Well, they do pay better. Apparently, there's a real kind of, you know, ladder of uh, payment in the Page world. I never knew. Well, that's very fascinating, Craig. <laughs> you know, we should go for the longest awkward pause in the history of television. Oh, yeah, let's do it. All right, then. <laughs> what the hell? What is wrong with you people? <laughs> the guy's trying to work here. I'm You're ruining it. I'm trying to set a record for America. And people giggling all over my paws. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're all right, man. Yeah, you're all right, too. Hey, I got you a present. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You remember I hypnotized you earlier? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I brought you the kangaroo testicles. <laughs> now I am complete. Let me just... Uh... Hang on. This is a delicate operation, but they, they will now remember in the future when men gather around the campfire, they will talk this being the night where Jeff became a man. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.